Alright, so you've died jumping out of a moving vehicle. You may have won a game or two, but you're still looking for ways to improve. Well, welcome to today's video where I'll give you some of my personal tips to improve your tactical gameplay. And hopefully get more of those delicious chicken dinners we all know and love. If you consider yourself an advanced player, take a look here. There might be an area you would like some tips on anyway. I will briefly say this is the first episode and we can make a bunch of them if you like them. So let me know what you think guys. Enjoy. Many players see silencers as a golden attachment to their weapons. It's nice, no doubt, but when exactly will it give your position away? We're going to look through each weapon class, sniper rifles, assault rifles, submachine guns and pistols and see just how much of a difference the silencer does when added to your loadout. Starting with sniper rifles, they can be heard without silencers from 1000 meters away. If you slap one of those ding dongs on it, its sound range is decreased to 700 meters. While it does lower the range by 300 meters, it's still a very noticeable sound. And late game, when the circle is around 1000 meters or less, players can locate your position, even if you fire with a silencer. However, the silencer does make it significantly harder to spot, as we see in this clip. Even though I am firing multiple shots, I'm still not being fired upon by any other squads. So it is still a very good thing to have a silencer late game, obviously. See, this guy had no clue where I was and I still could pick him. Moving over to the assault rifles. Without the shot being suppressed, it can be heard from a distance of 700 meters, which is the same as a silent sniper rifle. The suppressed shots does have a lower tone making it harder to hear, however slap a silencer on it and its sound range is now 350 meters. Still a pretty long distance. Personally I busted many silencer boys to late game who think they cannot be heard. This is where I switch to a compensator, if I have one on me. Over to the submachine guns and pistols, now these weapons share range. And this is where the silencers are on point. Both submachine guns and pistols can be heard from 400 meters away, but with a silencer, its range is only 100 meters, which is as stealth as it gets. This allows you to hunt or simply kill players late game with a low probability of being busted. And thinking about it, SMG suppressors don't really seem so rare, so grab them. Last, as a bonus, we have the VSS, aka the poop gun. It's silenced by default and can be heard from 125 meters out. 25 meters further than the submachine guns and pistols. Let's talk sound directions. You probably had the issue of not being able to tell from which direction of you were shot from. When shot directly in front of you or behind you. To explain, let's bring out Bob. Now this is Bob. He's minding his own damn business when an arm shot is fired somewhere to the right of him. Now, this was an easy thing for him to tell from which direction the shot was coming from. However, another day when Bob was just minding his own shit, a bullet was fired behind him. He gets confused and don't know where to look, so he takes from the first scenario and adjusts his view and ears for the second shot. Now when that second shot lands, he knows exactly from which direction it was fired from. A way you can detect whether your enemy is upstairs in the building or downstairs is simply by using your ears. It sounds different upstairs than it does downstairs. As we see in this clip, we're going to bring that in and use it. And now we can hear that he's upstairs, which means he's going to be either on the balcony soon or running downstairs. So let's talk a bit about tactical gameplay. Such a fancy two word thing I came up with. Most players always peek the right side first, as it's simply easy to shoot leaning right than leaning left. If I'm not in cover and I'm forced to fight, I will always be aiming directly at the left side 
meaning the right side of the object that they're hiding behind. This gives me the first shock. To increase your odds of not being spotted late game, drop your backpack. If there's not that many players left, you do not need a shit ton of meds or bullets. To get a good early game, it's important that you own your area. Take care of any other players immediately. You do not need anything else than a gun. Spot any players landing and simply rush them. And if anybody is in a car early game, fire a few rounds at them just to make them know that this is your hood and you don't want nobody around. Talking about picking your battles, well sometimes players will pick the battle for you. But in different situations, you can pick the battles for them. In this example where I'm going to take fire here from the hill to the left of us, there he is. Completely potato that shot. And while, should I fight him here? Well, no, he's going to be forced to move towards me. So why not get away, get healed up, and then, well, take him out at another point, because we know exactly the area that he's going to be in. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Patience is key if you're only in it for the win and you don't really care about kills. Of course you're going to grab some really late game because you'll have to. Anyhow, grabbing your vehicle and rushing into one of the late circles can most of the times will get you a top 10 without any problems. In this example, I simply camped my butt cheeks off and sat in the same house for three circles just to prove my point. Shooting from the prone stance can be hard, but if you know how to get comfortable with it, it's a really good skill to have. Simply third person aim at them before you first person aim and then shoot at that exact place. There's really no magic to it. So imagine you having a silencer. They probably had no clue. Even with a flash hider, you'd be hard to see. Personally, I feel that PUBG has a lot of room to beat the opponent by simply thinking a few moves ahead, sort of like a game of chess. In this section, I'm going to bring some examples of different ways you can put yourself in the best position by trying to outplay your opponent. Late game, some players pick a house, close the doors behind them, and forget any other houses around them ever existed. When you come into a late game circle, Look at the doors, one house with all of its doors open, and one completely shut. Now where's Waldo? Doing the unexpected can easily work in your favor. By thinking about what the opponent thinks you're going to do, you can try to pull an unexpected move. As in this clip, he expects me to pick the same place again, yet I'll choose to reposition and get the jump on him. Now, this is just an example, and this can be used in many different situations. Playing this game can sometimes feel like playing hide and seek. So we'll see here I have my area under control, at least I think so. I walk into the house, and this door is open. Now I hear him stepping upstairs, so I choose to what can I do, either rush up or run out, open the door, pretend like I'm going away simply to slowly walk backwards towards the house. Now he's gonna be thinking, well he probably left. Sure I could have done this a bit more silent but in this example 
He's simply looking out the window. That's it for this one. Let me know what you think. I did have a ton of fun editing this one. So I'm trying to become better and learn. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that sexy subscribe button. It is the best feeling ever, the feedback that you guys are giving me. Holy shit. And for fuck's sakes, feel free to join the Discord and let's do some games together. Anyhow, I do have one more thing. I do see some players asking questions in the comment section. So let's do something new, ask away, and each week or so I'll do a Q&A with anything concerning the game. Till next time, stay awesome.